Thank you for agreeing to discuss your findings on formation of exoplanets. I would like to discuss the study and the inferences as well as what lies ahead to be studied. What prompted your interest in astronomy? Sorry, it's not really good. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Uh, is it is it okay? Yeah, it sounds better. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't catch the the question. Yeah. So I said I would like to discuss the study, the inferences, and what lies ahead to be studied. What prompted your interest in astronomy? Why I'm interested in astronomy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's fun, <laughs> because it's uh, it's about uh, objects that are very far from us and uh, which we never observed before. So it's it's always uh, very challenging uh, to understand uh, uh, astrophysical objects which are very distant from us and and very different from what we see uh, in the in the solar system, for instance. How did you get involved with this study? I was uh, involved uh, because I uh, also uh, took part in the building of the instrument. Um, so the instrument that we used uh, at the Very Large Telescope, the instrument is a sphere. Uh, and uh, so we started uh, the design uh, of the instrument back in 2005, I would say. So I was involved already at this step. And then when the instrument was uh, implemented on the sky, on the telescope, I was also involved in uh, uh, the, um, the survey uh, that was uh, accomplished with this telescope. Uh, and in addition to the survey, in addition to all the observations that uh, the consortium of people who built the instrument was running, I also had some my own programs uh, with other colleagues, uh, and this is the, this result is part of these uh, other programs. Was this instrument built specifically for this research? It was built for uh, imaging exoplanets uh, okay. and also uh, planetary systems. What drew your attention to AB Aurigae in the Auruga constellation in the first place? Well, it's because it was already uh, observed before, of course, so we knew uh, that there was a protoplanetary disk around the star, and uh, the most recent images were obtained with ALMA, the um, Atacama Large Millimeter Array. It's an interferometer uh, working in uh, radio, um, radio astronomy. And uh, from, from this telescope, we already had a suspicion that there might be a planet in formation in this disk. And this is why we uh, decided to use a sphere to observe this system. Could you explain this study and its findings? Yes, yeah, so, uh, so AB Riga is a star which is more massive than the Sun, but also very, very young. Uh, the Sun is like 4.5 billion years old, while uh, AB Auriga is probably only like 5 million years old. So very young. And around young stars, we expect uh, planets could be very bright uh, because we are observing in the infrared. And uh, so we knew that uh, there was a protoplanetary disk around AB Auriga. That means uh, a system with a lot of gas and a lot of dust. And so when we see this, uh, you can, you can uh, find out that uh, this, this, this gas and this dust will evolve uh, into planets. So uh, this is what we focused on. We, we, we decided to observe with sphere in order to um, observe the very details in the protoplanetary system of AB Auriga and try to identify if there was planet uh, in the system. And so what we find is that uh, we have a lot of structures and we call this uh, spirals because they, they have spiral shapes. Um, and these spirals are in fact gas uh, which, which are uh, taking this shape 
And usually when we see a spiral, um, we, we can infer that there is an object uh, which is perturbating the gas, the gravitation uh, impact of an object in the gas produce a spiral. So when you see a spiral in a disk, you try to find which object has triggered the spiral, in fact, because you know that it's produced by an instability. So this instability could be anything, but it could be also planet, planet information. So we try to identify if some of this uh, uh, pattern structures in the disk could be related to the presence of a planet. And so when we get the images from a sphere, we find that uh, one of the spiral was twisted. Uh, and, and it's not perfect, uh, it's not a perfect spiral. Uh, you have a kind of structure at, at, the, at, the, at the, the tip of one of the spiral, which looks like a twist, uh, like if the spiral was uh, twisted. And, and this is exactly what we expect uh, from uh, modelization, from theory of planet formation. So when you ask people doing uh, modeling, uh, if what, what looks like a system uh, in which a planet is forming, and if you have gas in this system, what the image looks like, and they will give you an image which uh, resembles a lot what we observe with Avi Origa. So we did not observe a planet, okay, we never detect a planet, we detect a structure which could be the impact of a planet onto the gas, uh, onto this, this uh, spiral arm. Yeah. So this is indirect, uh, indirect detection. Um, the other problem is that uh, we don't know which mass is uh, creating this uh, structure, this, uh, this spiral. So we see the spiral, we see the structure, uh, we have theories indicating that it could be planets, but we are not able to measure the mass uh, of the object. So we, we, did, we, we, um, we concluded that it could be a planet, but it could be also something more massive than a planet, uh, like maybe a ground rock, for instance, uh, an object a little bit more uh, massive than, than a planet. So it's, it's, still a, it's still a study that is ongoing, um, we are continuing the observations uh, in order to uh, determine if this is actually a planet in formation or if it is uh, another type of object. Am I, was it clear enough? Yeah. What was the timeline of the study? Oh, the timeline, uh, well, typically uh, we started by asking telescope time, so we requesting telescope time like a year ago, uh, last year basically, and we, it was, so it was, um, it was uh, accepted, um, the request for observing time was accepted, and then the observation were executed in uh, December 2019, last year. Were you initially looking for signs of formation of an exoplanet, specifically? Uh, yes, definitely. This is exactly why we are observing very young uh, star. Uh, because we know that the planets are forming when uh, a star is very young, so when it's like one million or five million years old. And it took about uh, probably a million years for a planet to form. Uh, so it is important to look at very young planet. If you want to understand how the planet form, you need to look at very young systems. How many countries were involved in this study? How many contributors? How many countries were in, uh, oh, countries. In, involved in this study? Countries. Oh, so we have uh, so people from France, uh, people from um, from uh, US. Uh, people from Taiwan and people from Belgium. So we have four countries. Okay. And how many people were involved in this study? Uh, let me check uh, exactly the number of people. Uh, if I can, uh, uh, I don't know, I think we were like 10 people. I can check directly. Well, you have the name. 
the name of the people um, uh, sorry um, your letter okay so I, I remember in mind they want two three four five six seven so we are 11 people. Okay. And what were their roles? Sorry? What were their roles? Oh, the roles of the other people? Yes. You mean? Okay, uh, so, so other people um, contributed uh, to, um, to the interpretation of the data, mostly. Uh, so once we have done the observation, we need to understand what we are observing. So we need to compare the observation with models, for instance. So uh, a lot of people contributed to this comparison. Uh, some people contributed to uh, uh, making a link with the previous data we have with Alma. Uh, and that's basically uh, the role of the other people. And, and some of them also contributed to the writing of the paper. From which observatory were the observations made? They were made from the very large telescope in Chile. Okay. Which activity took the most time and attention? Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, definitely the last, the last phase of writing the paper. And what was the most difficult part of this investigation? Well, the most difficult was like to be convinced uh, that uh, we are actually something we have. We are actually looking at something which is very new. So we need to convince ourselves that it's valuable for a scientific publication. Uh, it's not specifically hard, but it requests to be convinced. So to make sure that you have done the analysis correctly, you don't make any mistake, etc. What was your first reaction when you concluded it is likely to be the formation of an exoplanet? Well, I think it was very exciting, even though we don't have an image of an exoplanet directly, uh, having a, even a, a suspicion that it could be a planet forming since it is very new, it was it was very exciting. Yeah. What was the most fascinating aspect of this study? Uh, well, again, uh, it's it's about the same question, but uh, um, I think it gives it gives some uh, perspective in the work. Uh, so so it's a system for which we will reobserve, uh, ask more telescope time to. Uh, perform more observation because if we confirm that it's a planet in formation, then it's become uh, very important uh, to follow up. So to, to monitor the system, make sure that it's a planet, uh, make sure that it rotates around the star, etc. What were some of the challenges the team faced during this study? The, the challenges? Yes. Um, well, the, the challenge is, is um, first to get um, very good observation and um, well, you know, when you observe at the telescope, uh, sometimes the conditions are good, sometimes they are not so good. And I think we were very lucky to have very good, extremely good condition, in fact. So the, the fact that we see very clearly something is also related to uh, the quality of the data, the quality of the telescope, of the instrument. So that's the first challenge, to get the data uh, with a very good quality. And then the second challenge is to, um, is to compare uh, the observation with the models, because there are many models. Uh, some are more or less complex, some are very detailed, uh, some are less detailed, and you have to figure out uh, which one is the most appropriate for the comparison, because you don't want to uh, make an interpretation that is too far. Uh, you don't want to conclude something uh, that is not very correct. So you need also to 
make sure that you use the right model. Uh, and so you use one of the models that exist. It's, it's not the most sophisticated, it's the one on the opposite, which is almost the simplest, uh, because it's enough to, uh, to interpret uh, the images, in fact. So, so now, of course, we need to think about models that are more detailed uh, in order to explain uh, the observations. Which technologies were used for this study? So we use um, a technology called adaptive optics, uh, which is uh, something which is integrated into the instrument, uh, which is able to correct uh, for the atmospheric turbulence. So when the light from the star cross the atmosphere of the Earth, it becomes blurred. And uh, we are correcting this blurring in order to have very, very fine uh, detail on the, on, on, in the images. Uh, so that's one of the uh, one of the technology we are using. Uh, the second one is coronagraphy. Uh, so exactly like a system which is um, able to observe the sun corona. So you block when you block the, the the sun and you try to see around the sun. Well, it's the same sort of technology but applied to stars instead of the sun. So all the stars uh, and so the stars are much smaller. And this system is able to block uh, the light from the star, so you can see everywhere around and look for planets, look for disks, look for structures. These are the two main technologies we use. Why were these two technologies ideal for this study? The, about so Why were these? Why were these two technologies ideal for this study? Oh. Um, yeah, I, it's not the only ones, but yeah, they are necessary to perform this study, definitely, yeah. What makes this study unique? Um, well, it's, it's not unique because we have already many observation of planetary systems. Uh, we have a lot of um, observation of uh, disks, okay, protoplanetary disks and especially Sphere has observed a lot of them. Uh, we also have images of planets, uh, and we know that planets are forming inside disks, inside protoplanetary disks. Um, and, and we know that planets should uh, generate uh, structures like spirals in a disk. So we knew from the theory uh, that planet and spirals are connected, but we never ever made the connection between the two. So we never observed in the same system, a planet and the spiral, okay? So here, we don't have exactly observed that because we, we did not detect the planet, but we detected the presence of the planet in the structure of the, of the spiral. So we are getting one step closer to making the connection between um, the planet and the spirals and the structures in the disk. What is the currently the best explanation for the formation of exoplanets? Um, there are several uh, scenarios for uh, forming exoplanets, and we have only we, we never witness uh, planet formation, so we only have theories, uh, which are based on uh, a lot of observations, of course, including observations of the solar system, uh, planet in the solar system, etc the analysis of rocks on the Earth, uh, elsewhere in the solar system, but, but we never seen uh, a planet forming. So there are several theories. Uh, one of them is that um, you have rocks uh, forming into the system, and these rocks are colliding, they are making bigger rocks, uh, bigger and bigger, and when this rock has been has reached a mass which is large enough, like maybe 10 times uh, the mass of the Earth, okay, 10 times the mass of the Earth, then this, this big rock, this big planet, starts to accrete the gas. And it becomes a giant planet like Jupiter or Saturn. So that's the theory for forming a, a giant planet. Uh, there are other ways to form a telluric planet, rocky planet like the Earth. Uh, but here, in fact, the, the, the case we, we're talking about 
if it is a planet, it's it's necessarily a planet that is uh, big like Jupiter or maybe even bigger. So we believe that the planet formed first, the rock of the, the core of the planet is forming first, and when the core is formed, then it accretes the gas which literally falls on the on the core of the planet and it makes a bigger planet which is a gas giant planet. So what kind of exoplanet will this be if this planet forms? It, it will be a giant planet, uh, really, maybe even bigger than Jupiter, maybe, maybe 10 times the mass of Jupiter. But it couldn't be a planet that is like the Earth. It's a, or it would be, if it were a planet like the Earth, it wouldn't make this kind of spiral, the, the spiral would not uh, be detectable in that case. So it's necessarily a very big planet. So is it safe to conclude it could be a hot Jupiter? Uh, no, it's not a hot Jupiter. Uh, because Well, hot Jupiter means two different types of planets. Uh, Jupiter can be hot if it is very close to the star. And this is usually what we refer when we say hot Jupiter. Uh, but when a, when a planet like Jupiter is forming, then the temperature is very high. It's like 1000, maybe 2000 degrees. Uh, so, so it's also a hot Jupiter, but not because it's close to the star, because it's uh, young. Okay, so here we're talking about a young uh, Jupiter planet, which is probably uh, very warm. What do we know about the planetary system that is being formed? Well, we don't know. We don't know much, in fact. <laughs> We know, we know a little bit about the edge of the system. We know the quantity of gas and dust uh, that, is, that is there and which will form planets anyway. Uh, but we don't know yet how many planets are formed, uh, if this planet will survive, etc. So, so there's still a lot to be understood uh, about, uh, about this system. Why do you think this planet may not survive? Why, why, sorry, why this planet would not be what, sorry? As you mentioned, we do not know if this planet is going to survive. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, because some planets, um, some planets form in the disk, okay? If, if you have a planet forming in the disk, uh, then the disk is, uh, is made of gas. And when the, when the planet uh, rotates around the star, then there is a friction with the gas. And so the planet slow down. Uh, and when it slow down, it gets closer to the star and eventually it can be a uh, hot Jupiter. Uh, and, and sometimes it can even disappear into the star, swallowed by the star. So we know that some planets are forming in systems and they finally end up uh, merging with the star. Uh, they disappear into the star. So we don't know if uh, all planets survive, in fact. Well, this one is probably like 30 astronomical units away from the star, so it's very far away. Uh, there's not a lot of chance for this planet to migrate uh, very close and, and disappear in the star, but we know that it, it can happen. Yes. Could you tell us more about the host star? Uh, the star is, uh, is more massive than the Sun. Uh, it's 2.4 times the mass of the Sun. Uh, it's also very young, as I said, uh, only a few million years. Uh, uh, yeah, essentially that's the two parameters. Yes. And what do we know about the history of this system? Uh, not, not much. <laughs> Unfortunately, not much, no. We, we, we don't even have an exact uh, measurement of the age uh, because it can be between like one and five million years old. So it's, it's not very accurate. This host star is a Herbig AE star, right? Yeah, yeah. What are some of the typical characteristics of a Herbig AE star? Uh, they are very bright, 
because they are very massive. So it's essentially uh, the mass of the star, which which make it an air big star. And they, are, they have also a lot of emissions. Um, so, so when we started observing star with spectrograph, uh, we realized that they have uh, uh, signatures in the spectrum. And in fact, uh, the reason why they have signature is because they have uh, an environment of gas. So the light from the star is, cro is, uh, is traveling through the gas and creates some absorptions or emission in some cases. Uh, and, and we see this, uh, this, this, um, this signature in the spectrum. So the fact that it's an Arabic AE star uh, means, in fact, that it is surrounded by a disk. How common are these stars? Oof, I, I don't have a clear idea of that. <laughs> Cannot answer. Okay. And how often do uh, big stars have orbiting planets? Uh, I don't know if we have already example. Uh, I don't think we have many example of uh, planets around their big AE star. Um, it, it could be it could be one of the one of the first, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not not many. Not many. As you mentioned, the spot formation of this potential planet is quite far from the host star, 30 astronomical units. What does the distance between this spiral and the star tell us? Uh, well, it, it tells us that planet can form at 30 astronomical units. That's already, I mean, if it is really a planet in formation, then it forms at 30 astronomical units, which is not obvious, in fact. Uh, and, and in fact, we, we never, as I said before, we never witness a planet at formation. So it tells us that really a planet can form at such a distance from the star. In the solar system, 30 astronomical unit is very far. It's the orbit of Neptune. But yes. this one is not a solar system. It's not a sun. It's more massive than the sun. So 30 astronomical units, uh, it's, it's far away, but not, not as far as in the solar system. Okay, but at least we see that it's possible to form a, a planet at this position. Okay. In what ways will this distance affect the planet formation? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, we don't have a clear idea of that. Okay. Were there any peculiarities in the orbit of the system? In the orbital what, sorry? Were there any peculiarities in the orbit of this system? Sorry, I didn't get what you, you were saying. Were there any unique traits in the ob orbit of this system? The orbit? Yes. Uh, no, I, I uh, no, there is no, well, we don't have the orbit yet. I mean, we are just, uh, we just have an image and we don't have the full orbit yet. So we don't really know. Yeah, come in. We don't really know yet um, what is the orbit, in fact. Okay. When did you first consider the possibility of it being a birth of an exoplanet rather than being something else? Uh, well, as I said, it's uh, when we started to realize that the image was uh, very similar to uh, to the models. Okay. So. It's a suspicion that it should be a planet forming, although it's not a, a firm uh, conclusion, of course. Okay. What were other plausible hypotheses of what this twist might be? It, it could be a more massive object. It could be a brown dwarf. It could be a star also, uh, although we don't, uh, well, it's, it's unlikely, but it could be a star. Um, it could be also just uh, what we call instabilities in a system. Uh, so not, not always related to planets, uh, but other sort of instability. I mean, a planet is somehow an instability because while it rotates in the disk of gas, it perturbs the disk, the gas, and, and create an instability. But an instability can arise also for other reasons than a planet. 
and how did you rule out the other possibilities? Well, we're not completely ruling out the other possibilities. Um, if it were a star, uh, it should have been visible as a star. So we, we believe it's not a star. Uh, well, at least it's, it's not likely. Uh, and this is why we believe it should be a planet, something that we don't see directly. We don't detect it. Is there a possibility this uh, system might form multiple exoplanets? Yes, definitely. Definitely, because we see a lot of spirals. And if each of the spirals are, are actually a planet, then that means a lot of planets. So, so in principle, when a, when a system forms one planet, there is no reason for uh, not forming other planets. And how many exoplanets are we talking about? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know at all. What does the analysis of radiation emission spectrum of the system reveal? Uh, well, in fact, it's difficult because um, it's not straightforward to measure uh, the, the emission uh, because, because of the disk. So the disk uh, has a lot of structures and so it's difficult to measure uh, the flux from the planet. And in fact, we believe that we, we are not able to detect the flux of the planet and, and this is why we conclude that we don't see the planet. So we see only the flux from the, from the gas and the dust uh, in the system, but not from the planet directly. What do we know about the composition of the dust and gas in the spiral? Well, we know that there are molecules in this uh, system, like uh, carbon monoxide, for instance. Certainly also a lot of hydrogen, of course. Uh, and for the dust, uh, it can be any kind of dust because we don't have very strong constraints. So, so it's, in fact, the dust that we see with sphere is different than the dust that we will see with another telescope uh, because we're not using the same spectral range. So with sphere and infrared, we are sensitive to uh, dust that have uh, sizes of a uh, few microns. Okay. So only the little grains, and we don't see the other big grains, in fact. It doesn't mean that they are not there, it means that we don't have the sensitivity to see it. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a world distribution of, of, of dust, uh, dust sizes. So. What kind of atmosphere will this potential planet likely to have in future? Well, certainly a, a gas planet, so, so uh, with an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium in, in majority. How many spirals were observed? Uh, so in the central part, we see uh, at least two big spirals. Uh, but in fact, all these spirals are, have little structures. So, so we see a lot of them, but mostly two. Uh, in the very inner part, and then if you look at the very outer part, then you see a lot of a lot more spirals. But we believe that these ones are not due to planets, but more to instabilities. Okay. Were these two spirals interfering? Uh, yes, probably, probably. Yeah, if, if you have more planets in the system, then they all launch spirals, and all of them, all of them interfere. How big were these spirals? How big? Uh, they can be uh, several, uh, several uh, uh, hundreds of astronomical units. What does the next few million years for this system look like? Uh, well, probably that in, in one million year the planet will be formed and uh, most of the gas will be dissipated. So, so the, the, all the disk we see in the image will disappear. And, and we will be left with uh, planets. Or well, maybe it will take more than one million years, maybe, maybe five or ten. That, that's the point, we, we don't know exactly. If that is the case, this would make it the youngest discovered exoplanet so far, right? 
Yes, if it is an exoplanet, then it's the youngest, yeah. yeah. When do astronomers use the near infrared imaging of the stars? Sorry, could you repeat? When do astronomers use near infrared imaging of the stars? Well, we use uh, near infrared because um, because it's it's the wavelength where uh, we can use uh, adaptive optics also. So with adaptive optics, we can provide uh, very detailed images, and we need we need to resolve the very central part of system. So we need adaptive optics. So near infrared is interesting because you can use adaptive optics and also because it's the range uh, where you expect a planet to be very bright. If you look in the visible, the planet will be very faint. How did you test your hypothesis? How do, do we test the hypothesis of, of what, of the planet, of, of the object being the planet? Yes. Um, well, again, I think it's at the moment, the only test is to compare with the models. Uh, okay. That's that's the only thing we can do. What is your role at the Observator de Paris? Uh, I'm, I'm a researcher uh, and I work on exoplanets and, protopla and um, uh, uh, protoplanetary disks, sorry. Uh, yeah, mostly uh, I work also on um, uh, design of uh, instruments. I'm doing instrumentation and observations and interpretation of observations too. Is your team planning to study more about this system? Yes, definitely. We already asked for more telescope time to re-observe the AB Origa. And what do you expect to find about the system this time? Uh, we, we would like to confirm first that we the, the structure is still visible uh, to see if uh, it rotates around the star in a Keplerian motion. Uh, okay. And if the, the shape of the spiral is stable or evolve over time. What lies ahead to be discovered about exoplanets? A lot of things, <laughs> many, many, many things. Yeah, it will be too long to describe uh, what has been, what has to be done on exoplanet. It's really a, a young science. So, uh, in particular, we 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 need to understand how they form and what they are made of, also. Are we likely to find more instances of planet formation in the near future? Yeah, yes, uh, definitely. With uh, with instruments like Sphere or GPI uh, or other instruments that are installed on uh, eight meter telescopes, also with uh, the next uh, space telescope, James Webb, uh, we will find out more planets. Um, the next big telescope on the Earth will be the extremely large telescope, which is a 38 meter telescope. So also we expect uh, to find more planets. How can this discovery influence what we already know about planet formation? Um, again, I think the it's it's really because it's a very young system. So we never really observed this, this stage uh, with Sphere. Uh, we, we, we have done that with ALMA, with the instrument ALMA. Uh, we can observe a young system, but we don't see the same thing. We see mostly big dust and, and gas. Uh, but with, with Sphere, it's really uh, new to uh, uh, be interested in very, very young stars. What do we now know about planet formation that we didn't know before? Uh, again, I mean, it's uh, what, what we learn is uh, typically that uh, a planet could form at 30 astronomical units from a star that is more massive than the sun and that it has an impact uh, on the distribution of the gas and the dust. 
that's mm -hmm. mostly um, what we learned. And of course, it's um, uh, this system is a cornerstone, um, and and will be uh, uh, we'll probably observe more systems like AB Riga in the future, of course. What are some of the other studies you are currently working on? Uh, there are many, few of, I mean, that, that's typically on other systems uh, that are a bit older than AB Origa, in fact. Uh, okay. Usually the stars we are observing with a sphere are uh, like 10 or 20 million years old. Okay, it's well, basically less than 50 million years old, between 10 and 50, say million mm -hmm. years um, and and they have um, they have they have gas and dust around uh, so we can detect a disk and uh, and so we are performing a survey of uh, hundreds of stars to detect uh, new planets well those were all the questions I had for you would you like to add anything? Uh, no, I think we, we already covered the subject uh, very much. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for agreeing for this interview. It had been a great pleasure discussing this with you. Well, me too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.